what's up guys, Evans here. Thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by again. Today, I got something something special for any of you guys that are interested in doing Minecraft videos and then you want to make thumbnails with Minecraft figures. Um, you, I got two quick things I can show you. The first one, which is going to be the simple route for those of you guys that want to do that. We have this program right here called Minecraft Skin Viewer, which will actually give you a 3D model that will come out in a 2D way. So if you just open it up, type in your username, hit enter, you have your skin. You can move this character around and do as you please. Then all you have to do is screenshot it and then you have a picture. Then all you have to do is just go in, cut out the outside either in Photoshop or if you're using paint, then it's going to be a little bit tougher, but you can get the job done. But cut out the outside and then you have your figure. The more complicated way that I'm going to show you guys today involves a program called Cinema 4D. Now, first things first, if you do not have that program, it's expensive. So, I will include a link to another video in the description that will show you how to get that program, or Cinema 4D, at a less expensive to free price, and then I can show you guys what else. So, the other link in the description, which is going to get you your Minecraft materials for Cinema 4D, it's going to get you this file right here. Now you're going to go to that and it's going to bring you and you're going to download items plus Steve Rig, Steve Rig plus others. And that basically is Minecraft items plus a Steve Rig. And that is a free pack from the YouTube channel Weed Lion. And he gave that out and I'm going to show you guys how to use that today. So first things first, once you have Cinema 4D, you're going to get this file. And you want to, what I do just to kind of keep things from getting messy is you're going to make a new folder on the desktop, call it whatever you want, but just drop that zip file that we downloaded into the folder just to keep things from getting messy or anything, just keep your desktop a little bit cleaner. And then you're going to want to program either 7-zip or WinRAR, and you're going to want to use the extract here for WinRAR, or if you want to use 7-zip, you can go over like that and extract here. And that will extract your Minecraft2.lib4d, which is basically going to be the Cinema 4D file format and the Minecraft Steve Rigged version 1.2. Now, with those files, you're going to have to bring them to a special place. So, I'm basically going to hover over them, or select them, right click, hit cut. And that will basically cut them from that file, and then when you paste, it will put them wherever you want. Now, if you have the legitimate or real version of Cinema 4D, you're going to find the folder we're going to go to in all programs. No. My bad. You're going to find the folder you want to go to in Computer, Local Disk C, Program Files, and you'll have a file that says Maxon, which is for Maxon Cinema 4D. And then if you have the basically file format that we are using today, you're going to go to your Cinema 4D R14 full file, open that up, go to Library, which is this is where you're going to make, you're going to basically even out if you have the legitimate version of Cinema 4D or our version of Cinema 4D at this file right here and you're going to go to library browser and you're going to right click and paste your files here you can see that I've already done that and that's why we're going to be able to access them in Cinema 4D now we close this file we can close all of our files basically just put that off to the side for now and you're going to open up Cinema 4D gonna get some problems because my version is not so complete um, I don't have the money for it so not so complete and what you're going to, want to do is first of all create a new setting right here with that button and you're going to want to put 1280 by 7, 720 or 19 by 1080 depending on how big you want to make it but if it's for a thumbnail 1280 by 720 will be fine 300 resolution you're going to come over here and right click and put ambient inclusion that's fine right click put global illumination and we're going to change the GI mode to IR plus QMC still image which is going to be a good render for a still image like we're making today and I think that should be good for now yeah that should be good so ambient inclusion is basically going to be shadowing and global illumination is going to be lighting improvements and now we have a basic field right here we're going to use this item right up here to look around and we can also use this one to rotate and what we want to do is we want to get our Steve rig in here. Now to do that, you're going to go over here to where it says Content Browser and click. It's going to open up this menu. Now this menu, we're going to go ahead and browse to where we placed our Steve rig. If you have the full version of Cinema 4D, you're going to go Computer, C, 
program files, the Maxon file, and then you'll be even with us. But we, if you're using the file that I linked in the description or the not full edition of Cinema 4D, you're going to go C, Users. If you're, you're going to want to find the folder that you are keeping our Steve Rake in, which for us, we have it on our desktop. Or if you're following the way that I did, it's on our desktop. So we're going to go to My File, Evan C, Desktop. And we have Cinema 4D R14 full, which is where I put it. R14 library, and this is basically the folder where we match up with the people who have the real edition of Cinema 4D library, browser, and we have our rigs. Now, the bottom one is Steve Rig version 1.2. If we double click that, it's going to open up. We have the Steve main, Steve no facial expression, and Steve smaller eyes. We're going to go ahead and just drag Steve main into the window over here and drop him and that will place him directly on the location zero zero and you can see we have a animatable Steve rig here now the main editable, editable things are going to be in objects and we go ahead and bring it here and the way to move them around is we can also use this which is a little star which will bring up this map right here and you can select the bone that you want to edit and use the arrows to move it around like so, or we can direct select and basically, you know, try to pinpoint each one. But if you want to move a body part, I recommend using this right here, the little uh, visual selector icon, and you can choose each bone and joint to move around and to move facial expressions or anything in the face or head. What we're going to do is you're going to click directly on Steve main. And it's going to open up this menu down here in the object user data. And if you scroll down, you can see a lot of different options. Now, the first set is armor, which there is diamond and di basically diamond armor all the way through. So we can put a helmet on them, chest plate, leggings, and boots, which depending on if you want to use those, that's up to you. You can just turn them on and off with the, the checkmark box that is next to each option. If we scroll down a little bit more, we have the colors. We can change his hair color, his skin color, and his eye color, which I'm going to leave how it is for the way that we're doing today. If you want to change the eye color to compare to your normal skin, you can also do that. Um, the next option we have is the pupils, which you will see a little indicator directly in the middle of this box. And as you move it, you will see that the pupils actually move with it. So basically where you place the the basically the pointer is where the eyes or the pupils are going to go the next one down we have pupil size which is a slider you can make them smaller or bigger we have the eyebrow rotation which if you can see the eyebrows they're basically right here here above the eyes and if we go back to Steve main scroll down to him the eyebrow rotator will allow you to rotate the eyebrows if you can see that the eyebrows will rotate now this two boxes right here will actually allow you to change the eyebrows expressions so if we rotate them like this make them look a little bit angry drag his left eyebrow up his right one down make him look just kinda weird and furious and you can basically just use these gliders to change the location of the eyebrow and the slider above to change the angle or the rotation next we have the eyelids now the eyelids is another slider and the farther down you go the more closed his eyelids will get so you can make him blink you can make him tired whatever you want to do the next slider we're gonna have smile which will basically curve the smile up now if you want to make him frown you can turn the smile up and you can go to the smile rotation and just one if you use your mouse wheel one mouse wheel up or down will either fill it or close it and that will make him frown or smile the next one we got, I'm going to move his smile back down, is the teeth size. So if I move this, you can see that the teeth will go in and out. You can basically make them chew. You can make them do as you please. We have teeth size this time, which will actually make the teeth just bigger or smaller. And then you're going to want to leave teeth spacing the way it is. Just don't mess with that one because that's just going to cause problems. We have the wide open or the mouth wide. So basically how wide his mouth opens. And you can slide that and you'll see it gets smaller, wider, as you please. We have the mouth open, which is how open his mouth is, really. Get a good look at the teeth, which is always weird. And that's basically going to be how you can edit the body, either through 
this guy right here, which is going to bring up the visual selector and let you do all that, or by directly selecting and then editing his properties in this menu. And then the way to make him look like your Minecraft character is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more, a little bit tougher. We're going to go to custom skin down here, and you're going to click on this button right here, which will bring up a browse menu. Now, if you browse to your skin, so let's say I use my my regular skin, and that's directly from the Minecraft skin folder, and I open it, it's going to give you this option, you're going to say yes to create a copy, and it's going to open it up like this, and there is your skin. Now, if your eyes are a little bit weird, or your mouth is in a different location, like, let me see if I can get the good one. If your eyes or your mouth are on the skin, it won't work. So if I bring up one that has the eyes and the, eyes and the mouth still on it, you can see that my eyes and my mouth are kind of glitching into the skin. So the way that we're going to fix that, if you want to fix your skin, is either by going to a skin editor website, or if you have Photoshop, then you can also do it that way. So we're going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. You can do the same thing I'm doing in Photoshop on a skin editor. But we open up our skin that we want to edit. So let's do my pony one. Get real close. And just like a skin editor, you can edit each block individually. So we're going to go ahead and get our brush. And let's say we want to make this. So basically what you want to do is take what your eyes are or the location of your eyes and replace them with skin color because the model is going to make its own eyes. So you don't need eyes and a mouth on your character. You want to get basically delete them. So we're going to use the color matcher eyedrop tool. Pick the color of your skin and then just paint over your eyes and your mouth and make him have basically no face. Next, we will save it as let's say this and then C4D for Cinema 4D and save it. Now, back into Cinema 4D, we're going to go ahead and open up the one we just made. Use the browse button right here next to the custom skin option. You're going to open up the file that you keep your skins in and we have Light B Pony Normal and then Light B Pony C4D. I'm going to open up C4D and that's the one with no face on it. Yes, and there we go. We have the full skin. Totally awesome and it works great and I love it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anything in explaining. I did my best I could and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Fall, fall, force, force.